Welcome to part seven of the video writing series. I'm Mike Lemire. In this uh, segment, we're going to get into the, the format. Now, if you'll notice, the previous, the four segments prior to this all really got into the process of writing. What we did is we took you through an approach to writing your essays, the process in which you can go through the steps of writing your essay, some of the fundamental principles of writing, uh, now what we're going to get into in this segment is the format with which you're going to present the final document. And that's really what APA is. It's a style, a format for constructing your essay. So let's start with some basic writing requirements. Again, this will all be covered in more detail in the, the lessons that you will get in orientation, but just a general overview. Um, the essay must be double spaced throughout and that includes the reference page, which we'll get to later. But uh, be careful to avoid the extra spacing between paragraphs. Just know that when you open Word for the first time, the default setting in the paragraphs, even when you go to double space, is to add an additional eight points of spacing between paragraphs. So every time you hit enter, it will double space the, the cursor and then add an additional eight points of, sp of line spacing which effectively amounts to about a triple space. Uh, you have to remove that default eight point setting after paragraphs in order to have a truly double spaced um, uh, document at the end. One inch margins, Times New Roman size 12 font. Uh, in, a, in another video segment, I will walk through setting up word, a Word document with the default um, APA settings that we want you to use for all your, your writing assignments, is, which includes establishing a default Times New Roman font that will set it throughout your document. The problem is if you just open Word, go to Times New Roman 12, just know that your header and footer will, which uh, you know we use the header for your running head, will still be a Calibri font, even though you change it in the body of the paper. So what I'm gonna do is walk through the steps to make sure that you have a default Times New Roman 12 font in all portions of your document. All paragraphs will be indented a half inch. Um, we ask you to use two spaces between sentences. Um, that is AR2550 and APA6 edition. So that, uh, that meets our Army writing style as well. And when it comes to abbreviations, uh, if you're going to use an acronym such as NCOPD, um, make sure the first time you use that in your writing, you spell out non-commissioned officer professional development, place NCOPD in parentheses, and then after that, anytime after that, when you use that, you can use the acronym. The only exception to that is if you're beginning a sentence, uh, you, don't, you do not want to begin a sentence with an acronym or an abbreviation. You definitely want to spell it out if it's beginning a sentence. Let's talk about the title page. So the first page of your final document will be the title page. And we'll show you an example on the next slide. Some of the uh, basic rules for the title page, you will have a running head at the top, a half inch from the top edge of the page, which is already the default space setting. Uh, you just have to open up your running head. We'll talk more about how to set that up in a future video. Um, you will place the words running head followed by the title of your paper in all caps in that header and then in the right uh, edge you will insert the page number and we'll show you how to do that in another video. <clears throat> Just know that when you establish your running head the primary purpose of this is to be able to collate your document and put your document back to let's say you print your document out at the printer and somehow another print job gets mixed up in your, your document, you can, with the running head, the page number and the title at the top of the page, you can pull the sheets of paper out that are all part of your document and you can put your document back together using the running head and the page numbers. Um, that's really a primary function in a printed document for a running head. It ensures that you're able to, to uh, reorganize the paper if the pages get shuffled. Same thing with a loose leaf book. If you had a book, you use the running head um, to place the chapters together and the page numbers as well. <clears throat> so this is what your title page will look like. 
Again, it should uh, be a mirror image of this. The only difference will be your unique title, your name, um, your instructor, and the due date for your assignment. So in this case, the title page, this shows you the running head at the top, title of the paper in all capital letters, uh, with the page number one does appear in the title page in the top right corner. In the center, centered on the page, will be six pieces of information for all of the assignments except the PEP. The personal experience paper you will add the unit and time period in which that particular experience happened. We'll show you an example of that when you get to the personal experience paper. So that essay alone will have six, uh, seven pieces of information on the title page. All of the rest will have these six pieces of information you see here. So even though your title is in the running head, on the title page and the first page of your document, you will retype the full title of your paper in what we call a title case. Now for those of you who, who aren't um, savvy in, in the English terminology, title case is just like the title of a book. Um, you capitalize all key words in title case. When I use the terminology sentence case, sentence case means you're only capitalizing the first word and proper nouns in that particular piece of information or sentence because that will come into play when we get to the references page. So you type the uh, title of your paper in title case on line one. Line two is your rank and full name. Line three, United States Army Sergeant's Major Academy spelled out. Line four is your class. Uh, class 43, class 44, if you're in the um, uh, SMNRC modified course, for those of our DeSofsi graduates, it'll be class 23, class 24. You'll put your instructor's name on line five, and then the final piece of information is the due date for this writing assignment. Now, even if you turn it in early, just use the due date for the assignment as the uh, date at the bottom of the title page. Now keep in mind this is all double spaced, centered on the page. If you have any questions, get with your instructor. The main body of your paper. So when you get to, if, you're, if your essay, if the requirement is that you have an abstract, page two will be the abstract. Um, our writing requirements in the non-resident course do not require you to have abstracts. Um, so page two in this case will be the start of the body of your essay, meaning that at the top of page two begins your introduction. Now the way that we begin the introduction in APA format is we place the title of the paper again centered on the top of the page. We do not use the word introduction, that term is not used in APA 6 edition, so do not put introduction here, put the title of your paper. That signifies to the reader that your introduction is beginning. Um, the title is not in bold case, bold font. <clears throat> Place your introduction section followed by the body and support. Um, make sure you have level one headings. Use third person in all essays except the personal experience paper where you're allowed to use first person. We talked about level one headings. Uh, make sure you use Purdue OWL, um, the Purdue Online Writing Lab website for examples of this. Most of you will only use level one headings. They are, I want you to think of headings as signs on the highway telling you what's, what's ahead. Okay, so your level one headings are your main points. They are um, a few key words that tell the reader what to expect in that section. The same thing as if I'm going down the highway and I see a sign that says Deming ahead 30 miles, it tells me what lies ahead and that's what your headings are really designed to do it's a road map for your reader guides them through the paper if you have subtopics within a level one heading within a main area then you can use level two headings it's just you know similar to your outline if you have subtopics within a main point in your outline those subtopics can become level two headings just make sure that you format those headings appropriately Level 1 through level 4 headings are all bold, bold face fonts. Um, and level 1s and 2s are in title case, meaning all keywords are capitalized. 
Levels three and four are in sentence case, meaning that only the first word and proper nouns are capitalized and they end with a period. The more levels you attempt to use, the more room you have uh, to, to make mistakes in terms of the format. Um, so my advice is stick with level ones, level twos if necessary. Um, again, the length of our regular assignments really don't justify you going much further than that. If you're writing a dissertation, um, you could go as far as level four, level five with some of your subheadings. All right, let's talk about citations briefly. We'll go through this rather quickly because there will be much more detail on this provided in your uh, distance learning lessons. But you need to use citations in order to avoid plagiarism. What citations do is they indicate to the reader your source for the information you just gave them. Anytime you paraphrase material from a document, I get information out of this book, I want to put it in my paper, I'm going to put it in my own words. It's still information you got from another source. You need to credit that source by providing a citation. We'll talk more about what that means in a minute. Anytime you have a direct quote, you obviously need to give the source for that quote in your paper. And that's what a citation is. It's a way that you indicate to the reader where that information came from. Who was the source of that information? So I'll give you an example. If I go to uh, a famous quote website and I get a quote from President Kennedy that I want to use in my paper, my source of that information is not President Kennedy. So my source is the website that posted the direct quotes. So if the website is called famousquotes.com, that is my source. I didn't get that information directly from John F. Kennedy. Um, you know, I got that from a source. It's called a secondary source. So as in the paper, I might say, as John F. Kennedy once said, with the direct quote there, and then my citation would be, you know, famous quotes, 2015, whenever it was published on, on that website. Okay, we'll talk more about that when we get to references. Note that there are two types of citations. There are in-text citations and there are parenthetical citations. It's two different forms or types of citations. Um, and people often get that confused with the formats for direct quotes. But we'll talk more about in-text and parenthetical citations in a minute. But your direct quotes, there's two different formats in which you place those quotes in your essay. If the quote, quotation is less than 40 words long, then you will place it in the text, in the body of your paper, or in the sentence that you're constructing with quotation marks around it. If it's 40 or more words long, rather than place four lines of a quote within the body of your paper, you're going to take that whole quote, you're going to drop it down to its own paragraph, essentially, you're going to indent the entire quote, block it off a half inch from the left margin, and you're going to remove the quotation marks. That sets the quote apart. We know it's a direct quote because the whole thing is indented a half inch. So that's a different format for long, uh, lengthy quotes. Uh, make sure you see Purdue OWL for specific examples. So parenthetical citations is when you place the author and the year in parentheses at the end of the sentence. The two pieces of information required um, for paraphrasing are the author and year separated by a comma. You see the example here, if I get some information from Tate that was published in 2010, I would paraphrase the information in a sentence and then end that sentence with Tate 2010 in parentheses. That is a parenthetical citation. In-text citation is when I refer to the author in the sentence and place the year in parentheses immediately after the author's name. So according to Tate, 2010, and then I continue with my paraphrase material. As soon as the reader sees a last name in a year, it, it automatically triggers that that is a citation, that you are crediting Tate that was published in 2010 for, as your source for that information. Now here's two examples of a direct quote using both in-text and parenthetical citations. The important point here is that your qu direct quotes do not stand alone as a sentence in your document. You need to use a signal phrase 
to introduce the quote. It separates your voice from the voice of the author that you are quoting. So for instance, in the first example, the in-text citation, Carruth 1996 states that a traumatic response frequently entails, and then the direct quote, verbatim from Carruth 1996. The one thing that direct quotes need in addition to the author's name and the year of publication is a page or paragraph number in which that information can be found. Because you are taking directly out of a document, you need to let the reader know where they can find that quote within the document. So direct quotes require three pieces of information in the citation. In this case, because we've used an in-text citation, the page number itself goes at the end of the direct quote. So in this case, we separate the first two in text, the third piece of information following the quote. In a parenthetical, all three pieces of information go at the end of the sentence in parentheses. Carruth, 1996, page 11. Note the commas separating the information in the parenthetical citation <coughs> and the abbreviation for page as P period. If it was multiple pages, if my quote spanned over two, uh, two pages within the document, the abbreviation for multiple pages is P, P, period, 11-12 in this case. Citations for multiple authors, the only thing I'm going to point out here is the only time you use the word and is during an in-text citation with multiple authors. So rate and Tate 1997 versus the parenthetical at the bottom, we use the ampersand symbol instead of the word and between the author's names. <clears throat> when using citations for regulations or doctrinal manuals, which is fairly common for students in the SAR main course, um, we will use the nomenclature of the manual as the author. And so when we talk about bits of information here that you need for citations um, being the author and year. In this case, if we're using FM 5.0 published in 2010 as our source document for the information, Field Manual 5-0 becomes the author's piece of information in this case, and then it was published in 2010. If you'd like, you can include the title of the, the uh, particular publication in italics the operations process, but that is not required for the citation. The citation only requires author and year. Now the reason we do that in this course is because many of our students tend to use multiple um, publications, military publications, source documents that are, that are doctrinally based. And if you followed strict APA rules, you would probably put Department of the Army as the author. Um, but again, if you're using six doctrinal manuals as sources in your paper and they're all titled Department of the Army with similar publication years, it becomes quite confusing for the reader. We have to go back and look at your reference page every time we see a citation for Department of the Army to figure out which publication it was. By using the nomenclature for the manual, it makes it very simple for us to identify when you use multiple doctrinal references. <clears throat> All right, finally with citations, the one key here is that every time, everything you cite in your paper has to be listed on your reference page uh, with the exception of personal communication. Uh, so if, you, if it's a published document, if you got information from somewhere that you're citing in the body of your paper, it must be listed on your references page at the end and vice versa. If it's on your references page, that means that you've cited it somewhere in the paper. This is different than a bibliography. Uh, if you're constructing a large assignment and you're, you're told to put a bibliography together, uh, you will list every source that you researched to write that assignment in your bibliography. With APA 6 edition and, and references, you're only listing those things that you actually draw information from and place in your paper. Those are the only items that go on your references page. So double check yourself at the end, make sure that everything on your reference page is cited somewhere in the paper and everything that's cited is listed on your reference page. Um, it should match 
the author's name listed on your reference page should match the author that you use in the citation as well as the, the publication date. Um, we'll get into more detail in a future segment. That's it for this segment. Thank you for watching.